DC today. Uh, my name is Brian Seitel. It is Thursday the uh, 16th and uh, another kind of more volatile day of, uh, of trading to sort of go through and a really pretty good amount of uh, economic data that's out today that I wanted to kind of go through with obviously the, the biggest headline still being sort of this ongoing ripple effects and reverberations uh, through the financial sector and, and some of these banks. And I'll kind of touch on all of these all of these things. Um, but let's let's kick it off. So so last night or yesterday, actually, in markets, we had a down day across the board, uh, actually not across the board. The Nasdaq actually was was higher, but um, but we ended up closing sort of at the at the highs of the session and, and following into that close. Um, uh, futures were also positive. We were up something like 100 points for most of the night. And then things kind of fell off right before the open, probably due to Europe uh, being lower. But um, so we opened up down maybe 100 points, a little, little more than that. But we were down something like 300 and, you know, a little over 300 points by about 1030 a.m. Um, Eastern. Uh, and then the uh, ECB uh, uh, came out and raised interest rates by 50 basis points. And initially, you kind of saw markets sell off more, and that's kind of what led to that decline. And then we just slowly but surely sort of started climbing higher from there and and ended up closing up 373 points on the Dow for the day. So if you add those two numbers together, it's almost a 700 point swing on the day. So more volatility. Um, and it has to do with uh, different actions being taken in, in some of these banks. And I'll sort of uh, touch on that. Um, the uh, ECB raising rates by 50 basis points was was originally in the cards, although given the volatility, um, I think markets were actually thinking they would do something less than that. And Lagarde was out today saying that, you know, no, that they're going to fight inflation. They're going to keep rate, you know, which is too high in Europe. Uh, they're going to raise rates by 50 basis points. And again, that's taking their equivalent to Fed funds up to 3%. So it's still below ours at, say, 450 to 475 of course, they were negative a year ago, so there's there's that. They were sort of digging out of a deeper hole um, on uh, on interest rate uh, policy. Fed funds futures are actually still pointing to like a 75, 76% chance of a 25 basis point hike next week by the Fed in the U.S. Um, and I think it speaks to us having maybe gotten a little ahead of the curve as compared to, say, where the, where the ECB is, uh, and maybe just in a different part of the cycle. But... Um, so I, I kind of look at it as almost a token at this point. I mean, if we're at 450 to 475 and they're going to take us up 25 basis points and then in all likelihood, potentially pause at some point, um, I think we're getting pretty, pretty close to, to this thing. Um, the um, uh, interesting uh, for me, at least uh, on uh, interest rates and on the yield curve yesterday, we um, we were as low on the 210 spread as about 40 basis points, um, you know, following some of the flight to safety issues and, and market turmoil. Um, we were over 100 basis points for quite a while, um, you know, past month or two. Um, and so uh, it's it's actually somewhat of a good sign to see that the yield curve a little less inverted, although it's still inverted. Today, we were about 60 basis points on the 210 spread. So off of uh, yesterday, uh, quite a bit, but uh, but still less than the 100. And, and rates across the spectrum have pretty much come down. Um, the two year was actually before uh, ECB's announcement was at 390 on the day. We closed something like 417. It's a pretty big move. Um, the Fed follows the two year pretty closely as far as where Fed funds is going to go. It's still below where Fed funds is, which uh, historically hasn't always been the best of signs. You know, so if the two years at 417, in other words, and we're at 475, um, it either speaks to markets thinking the Fed has gone too far and will cut or or we're going to have a slowdown or both across the board. Yeah, yield curve today was a bit flatter. The, the big news, and this is not me saying this because it's just all over the place and I've taken a ton of inbound calls from people hearing about it and being concerned about it. Um, we sort of had the, the Silicon Valley Bank uh, deal, you know, going to FDIC and, and all uninsured depositors get shored up. We, we know that news. Call it Monday. Uh, Tuesday, we sort of had uh, Credit Suisse and um, and First Republic come into the news more um, about some issues that they have, particularly First Republic. And uh, overnight, uh, the uh, Swiss National Bank um, backstopped uh, Credit Suisse with uh, 50 billion Swiss franc, um, which which was good uh, on the day. And and again, it was a combination of of that 
somewhat, I guess, positive news, although, you know, Credit Suisse is still trading at $2 a share. So I guess go figure. Large consortium of U.S. banks, you know, more than 10 of them, all the big ones, all the ones that you would you would guess, put together a deposit amount of about $30 billion to go into First Republic. And they committed to holding the, this is just, you know, deposits, just cash coming into to accounts. Um, because as, as there is essentially a, a somewhat of a run on that bank, as deposits are coming out, you know, they, they have the Fed to provide loans and they have the support, but really they need, they need fresh capital. They need, they need the ability to, 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 um, allow people to withdraw, draw funds, withdraw cash. And as you know, banks are levered. And so there isn't as much on deposit as they've lent out and, and as, as of their liabilities are, um, so that was good news, um, and and uh, and was supportive of of the shares. I think that they were still down a little on the day, um, and and they're frankly still down, you know, seventy five percent or so from the high. So I don't think it's over yet necessarily, but but that was what was moving markets. The combination of of Swiss Bank coming in for one of their bigger banks, and then you know a consortium of all of ours kind of supporting another uh, fairly fairly decent sized bank here. Uh, and markets were were. Uh, we're happy about that, I guess, for the day. Um, but this is ongoing. Um, there, there was uh, some economic data points today. I'll kind of go through here. Um, initial jobless claims um, were 192 versus 206. So what it's saying is basically the labor market is still very tight, very strong, very resilient. Um, you know, the, the increase in interest rates uh, so far hasn't really slowed down the labor market to speak of. Uh, and that's a data point that would support that. So you, you're just kind of still getting this mixed bag of, of data as we go through you know, the, the effects of, of what rate policy will ultimately do to the economy. There was uh, a manufacturing number out. Uh, it's the Philly Fed manufacturing data, uh, data came out. Um, and this was actually weaker than expected. So you have sort of labor markets a little stronger than expected today. Then you have manufacturing data. That was weaker than expected. It came in at something like negative 23 versus a negative 15. Um, and inside of that number, actually, th there was um, quite a bit of uh, uh, lower uh, new shipments and lower prices paid uh, uh, for the past couple of years. 2020, mid of 2020 is the last time we've seen new shipments and some of those prices come in that low. So that all speaks to me as if the Fed is kind of getting what they want. And, and you know, as they say, don't fight the Fed. Um, and so again, mixed bag labor still tight, manufacturing, some price numbers coming in a little weaker than expected, and that's good. And then somewhat surprising, at least to me, was that um, housing actually, for as many things as I've said negative about it, because it's technically in, in a negative environment right now with interest rates being so high and mortgage rates being so high and the, so on and so forth, housing starts and building permits actually today were, were higher than expected. They came in something like almost 10% month over month. Again, you kind of have a mixed bag again, labor market still tight, manufacturing, some price pressures coming weaker than expected. Then all of a sudden, you know, housing pokes, pokes a little higher. Um, all these things Fed pays attention to. You know, there's a lot of inbound inquiries now and, and I really love them all. I love answering questions. I put one in the Ask Brian section today about counterparty risk. And I, I, it's come up a few times just because it's in the news a lot. People are hearing about some of these terms. They don't really fully understand what it means. And it's basically a risk of default of one financial institution causing issues for another. You know, they hold assets on their balance sheet. And should those assets get marked down or they have to sell them, you know, that can that can harm liquidity and that can harm the ability for that bank to stay viable. And I, I touch on that a little bit It's Thursday. So tomorrow we've got David back with you for Dividend Cafe. Um, and we're, he's doing more of a and a format, again, just because there's this great amount of inbound interest in what's going on in banks and, you know, should people move money around and all that stuff. And so he's got a great kind of different format for you tomorrow on Dividend Cafe. We have industrial production tomorrow and consumer sentiment on the economic calendar. So not, not a ton, but a little bit of data that will come in. And of course, we'll see how everything trades overnight and into tomorrow morning. But with that, I'll let you go today. Um, I appreciate you listening very much. I appreciate um, questions as you have them uh, uh, fire away. And, uh, and I enjoy speaking with you. And if I don't speak with you, uh, wishing you the best of luck on your March Madness bracket as we started the NCAA tournament today. And, uh, and of course, uh, happy St. Patrick's on Friday if I don't speak to you. With that, I'll let you go. Thank you again for watching DC Today. Mm -hmm.